Hello and welcome back to the Doctor's Garage here on YouTube. So in this video today, it's a little bit different to what I normally do covering the cars that I own. And actually it's about potentially thinking about my next car and some of the interesting things I've found about the new car market, in particular, the new Range Rover Sport. Now, for those who don't follow the channel regularly, I've got um, a Discovery 5 at the moment and a Defender and a Series 1, the whole Land Rover kind of family, really. And for me, I'm looking at potentially getting a new car and... I've been looking at the new Range Rover Sports, the new Range Rovers, and the other cars actually that are similar in that class. So your Porsche Cayennes, your X5s, that sort of thing. And I've found quite an interesting observation with that very recently. Now I must state here, this is definitely not tax advice. This is definitely not an expert opinion. This is just my observations as someone that's looking at the new car market. And some of the things I've found about monthly repayments that I think might surprise you about cars compared to like the new Defender compared to the new Range Rover Sport regarding the monthly price you might pay. So a little bit of background about me and why I'm looking at all this at the moment. So I have a Land Rover Discovery 5 at the moment. It's an HSC luxury model and I've owned that for about three years. And it's kind of getting to the time when I'm thinking about changing. And with the current used car market here in the UK being quite inflated still, even though it is dropping off that peak of used car prices being very expensive, they're still quite high. And so selling this car now would be good potentially to do that. I own this car outright. And so I could sell this car and probably get more um, than I would usually and certainly quite a good value compared to what I paid for it three years ago. Now, if I was to do that, buying another used car, let's say in this brand or another brand, you're still gonna be paying quite a lot of money. And so really the most sensible option actually, but arguably, and that's interesting, interesting to know your thoughts in the comments below, is to order a new car, providing you can wait for that delay on how long it takes to manufacture it, or if you get lucky and get a build stop that's nearly ready or something like that. So buying a new car at the moment is actually a cheaper thing to do rather than buying a used car, which is the first time ever I remember that being the case, but it certainly is at the moment. For those who do follow my channel here on YouTube and Instagram, you'll know that I have been thinking about getting out of my Discovery 5 at some point soon, but I'm trying to pick my perfect moment and exploring a lot of avenues. And that's why I decided to make this video just to inform people really, if they're in the same position as I am, some of the options available to you and some of the really interesting findings you'll look at when you start looking at the new car market. So as you can see in the title of this video, the main thing really I'm talking about here is actually company car tax or benefit in kind. And to briefly explain that to you, if you don't have a business or are employed by a business that you know currently has company cars, the company car scheme is a way for you to be able to own a car through a business. And so the business pays the lease and they can get some of the VAT back on that if they're that registered. And you then pay a benefit in kind, which is a type of tax really, because you having a car through the business is almost seen as a perk of your employment. And as a result, you pay some tax. And that tax amount is really, really variable, particularly now there's been an introduction of electric cars or hybrid cars. That's kind of changed what um, the prices of them are and some of the rates that I'm going to describe here in this video. So your company car tax is calculated on the cost of the car, the CO2 emissions, and also how much you earn. And those three calculations, those three numbers are calculated to produce a figure that you pay monthly. And that's something you pay out of your wage each month. Now, many people will know this current year, so 2022 to 23, on full electric cars, there's still only a 2% tax rate. So they're really cheap to have as company cars. So that's why you'll see people that have businesses, cars like the Porsche Taycan, which are expensive cars, but because they're full electric, your monthly repayments are really, really cheap, probably less than a hundred pounds. So you can have quite an expensive car if your business is willing to pay that lease and actually pay quite a small amount through a company car tax scheme. Whereas if you chose, let's say a Porsche Taycan as an example, and then pick something like, I don't know, an Audi Q5 that's like a diesel, you're gonna be paying hundreds and hundreds, probably like five, 800, 900 pound a month to have that car over a Taycan, which seems weird if you haven't looked into this before, that you pay so much less for a car that I guess would be considered a lot more premium monthly based on the fact of the CO2 emissions and the fact that it's fully electric. Now in my quest for a new car, I don't want a full electric car at this point. And a couple of reasons for that, but for me, I don't know if I still feel a bit of range anxiety regarding a full electric car. Is it gonna to get to where I need to get to? It's kind of the, the logistics of planning a schedule out of where you're gonna stop if you go on long drives. 
And also for me, I guess I need a big car. I, I want something like a Discovery 5 or at least a 4x4. I've got you know children and carry a lot of gear, often tow things with it. So I don't want something that's gonna just be electric for going around town. I need something that's gonna be able to go the distance. So for me, I think at the moment, right now, the best compromise is probably a hybrid. So a part electric car. And even though the hybrid ranges aren't great on most manufacturers, they're let's say, I don't know, 30 to 70 mile range, that'd still be perfect for me because it would allow me to kind of go around town go to work that sort of thing with the electric range but then still have an engine a combustion engine to back that up for longer distances so you're never gonna run out and be stuck and waiting for electricity or trying to charge at a power point in a service station or anything like that so for me that would be the best option and that's what i kind of base and revolve this video around uh, looking at that particular mark of cars i've been doing some calculations based on some of these cars in that kind of range that i have been looking at so we've got the porsche cayenne e-hybrid the BMW xDrive 45e M Sport, Range Rover Sport, the brand new one, the Defender P400e X Dynamic, the new Defender, and also the fully fat Range Rover 3 litre P440e partial hybrid. And they're the cars I'm going to be talking about today. Talk about the cost price of them, but also then also your, your tax, the company car tax that you would pay. Now I've based my calculations on a £75,000 a year salary. So as that salary changes, it does alter how much you'll pay. And there's a really good website called Comcar that you can use to work out how much you're going to pay on a car, um, depending on your particular salary. But I thought 75000 was quite a good sort of good going average salary for these sort of vehicles. So Let's begin with the Porsche Cayenne e-hybrids. This is a three litre V6 Tiptronic S. And importantly with all these cars, you've got to look at the CO2 emissions. So this does 71, I think it's particles of CO2 or something, but the number is 71 for that car. And the car vehicle cost at this kind of spec is 73,878 pound, which again, if, you, if your company is paying for it, they probably give you a range of the price that they're happy to cover for, or the monthly lease they're happy to cover for. And all these cars, apart from the last one, the full fat Range Rover, are within about 10,000 pound of each other. So a similar sort of price range. The Porsche Cayenne e-hybrid, monthly company car tax is 467 pound 40 a month. That's how much you would pay to have the Cayenne. The BMW X Drive, similar again. This is 73,000. Again, pretty much the same price is actually 300 pound less, but that's pretty much it. Still a 73,000 pound car. Puts out 27 particles, I think it is again, of CO2. So 71 compared to the Porsche Cayenne, the BMW is 27. And as a result, you pay 195 pound 65 a month. So between the Porsche and the BMW, the Porsche paying 467, the BMW paying 195. So quite a big difference there on your monthly outgoings through your salary. Now this is where it gets interesting for me because I do love Land Rovers and I've been looking at all the new Land Rovers out there. And as much as I love the older Defenders, like I've got a TD5, a 2006 um, Defender, I do like the new Defenders and the new Sports, the new Range Rovers, everything that comes with it. And the new Defender, let's say you pick the two litre new Defender, the P400EX Dynamic, which is a very nice looking Defender. You're talking around the high 70s for that price wise. And your company car tax for that is £503 a month. And it puts out 77 CO2 units, let's say. That's how much it puts out. So £503 for the new Defender. Now, the brand new Range Rover Sport that's literally just been released because it only puts out 18 on the CO2 scale, your company car tax is £138 a month. So you can get a Range Rover Sport brand new, or the new Defender, and you're paying around three, £400 more to have a Defender. And for most people, if they had that choice, they'd probably go for the new Sport. Most people probably would, I think, because it's brand, brand new. It's literally not out on the roads. I haven't actually seen one yet on the roads. So for me, this is quite an exciting new car. And £138 a month company car tax is pretty good. And for some um, amazing reason, really, the new range, the new Land Rovers um, that have been put out, so the Range Rover, but also the full-size Range Rover, have got a really low CO2 emission. So your Range Rover Sport is 18 units. The Range Rover, the 3-litre P440e, partial hybrid, is 19 units of CO2. And the company car tax on the brand new Range Rover, the full-size one, is only £172 a month. Now the problem obviously with that is the car costs a bit more money. So this base spec Range Rover is 
thousand pounds so obviously quite a lot more than the kind of that 70 to 80 odd thousand pound bracket i was working at but still it's interesting to see that the on a company car tax for you personally as an employee if your company's happy to pay for it the difference between your defender or your new range rover your defender is 503 pound a month your new range rover is 172 so really when you look at those figures it surprised me when i was looking at all these different figures from company car tax point of view that the new Land Rover series cars, the partial hybrids, the PEVs, have put out quite low CO2 numbers. And as a result, the company car tax is quite a lot lower. That for me, it was quite interesting. And I thought it was worth making a video around just to, to tell you guys about what I found. And it may influence what you do with your new car, if you've got a business, if you're employed by a business that does do the company car scheme an interesting fact so interesting to know your thoughts what do you think of that let me know in the comments below and is there any other cars you would add to that list for me they're the kind of ones i was i was looking at but i'm interested to know what your thoughts are on a car that's got the small electric range but then the bigger engine range what cars fall in that category that you would consider let me know in the comments below and thanks for watching this video subscribe to the channel and i look forward to seeing you guys in the next video